<laughs> you know who it is, and you know what time it is. Time to piss off some feminist trad cucks and whoever don't want to know the truth. Oh well, let's get started. What is going on, gents? It's RPM here, reporting from Mobile Command. Joker recently covered this article. So, of course, I had to take a look at it, and now I'm going to give my opinion on it and just how fucked up a lot of priorities are when it comes to the idea of marriage, especially some of the priorities over here in America. Now, this story is out of Taiwan, and it was published on the 7th of August. Quote, unquote, too fat husband granted divorce after wife demands a fee for quote, unquote, incompetent sex by Ben Cost. Now, normally I wouldn't look up the author of said articles. However, in this case, I decided to ease my curiosity. And this guy, if you look him up, he is exactly what you would imagine him to be. Weak, jellyback, spineless. Quote, unquote, she redefined a transactional relationship. Gentlemen, myself, many other men in this space long before me have all said the same thing in our own version. All relationships with women, especially sexual relationships, are in fact transactional. The fact that so many men, especially normie men, refuse to accept that glaring fact yeah, it leaves little hope for the men. Until more men are willing to accept it for what it truly is, you're going to have more men who will continue to be lost out here in these societies around the world. A man in Taiwan filed for divorce from his wife after she demanded he pay her for sex on account of him being overweight and bad in bed. Gentlemen, put a pin right there. The unlikely incel. Now that right there, this being a New York Post article, shows you the complete lack of empathy for this guy. The fact that they will call him an incel, that goes to show you right now that that term is meant to be thrown at any man who would dare go against the programming. However, this is a case where this man is in fact not an incel because he's actually fucking married with children. Surnamed How married his wife, Juan in 2014 and had two children, according to the South China Morning Post. Like I said, so the descriptor of him being an incel is completely wrong in this case. However, problems began three years later after his soulmate restricted sex to once a month. Gentlemen, Put another pen right there. Two years later, in 2019, Juan refused to have sex with him at all and regularly told his relatives that he was quote unquote, too fat and incompetent. Frustrated over the forced abstinence, her pent up paramour filed for divorce in 2021 but walked back the lawsuit after she promised to work on their relationship. 
Gentlemen, never, ever, ever give that snake a second chance to bite you. Yes, if you decide that you're going to walk away, walk away for good. No matter what she says, no matter what she promises, oh, we can work on it. We can do this. We can do that. No, 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 no. Even if you have children with her, you have to stand on your square. You have to stand on business and walk out that damn door and never return. How even registered their home in her name. Now, Joker thought that this was a stupid idea. However, in my humble opinion, that was genius. Why? Because that is no longer a financial burden on his part. She's got to pay for that house. But Juan reverted to her old sex blocking ways shortly after and reportedly charged him $15 whenever he wanted to make love or even talk. You see, gentlemen, this is why if you walk away, you never go back. They don't change. Leopards do not change their stripes or their spots. Tigers don't change their stripes. Leopards don't change their spots. A snake will shed its skin, though, but it's still a snake. So we all get the gist. The quote-unquote sex tax proved to be the tipping point. How wound it up filing for divorce for a second time this year, which the judge granted on the grounds that their marriage was quote-unquote cold and difficult to fix. At least the second time, hey, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Or as uh, G.W. Bush would say, well, a fool can't be fooled again. Before the second suit, the man had not spoken to his wife for two years, only communicating via messaging apps, presumably free of charge. His spouse did not want to dissolve their union and appealed to a higher court, but was ultimately rejected. Of course, she didn't want to have the divorce. Why? Because everything was going in her direction. It was good for her to have a roof over her head that he was paying for, to literally have her own husband have to pay her just to even communicate with her. Of course, she was a money pit. Interestingly, this isn't the first time someone has imposed a pay for play policy on their partner. In 2014, a wife in Taiwan charged her truck driver husband 2,000 NT, about 60 US dollars for hanky panky, as well as meals and chats on the basis that he didn't contribute enough money to the family. According to New York City divorce lawyer, James Sexton, two of the main issues couples get divorced over are money problems and issues in the bedroom. Yeah, very common. Very, very common. He also claimed that a sex drought typically results in infidelity, observing that, quote, unquote, men more, we want more quantity sex. Women want more quality, as he revealed in a recent podcast. Quote, unquote, it's the same reason why 
Skinamax is more popular with men than it is with women because men just want to get the job done, he said. Well, well, well. <laughs> Now I get to go in. All right, first pen. She said he was too fat and bad in bed. How many men, especially over here in America, are stuck in utterly sexless marriages with overweight women that they know they can't get it up for? Yeah, women let themselves go in marriage all the time, but then will tell their husband, oh my God, you're looking at another woman. You're looking at that flat back over there. You must be a perv. Um, yeah, I'm looking at that flat back because that flat back is what you were when I first married you before you decided to let yourself go. Hmm. Talk about freaking breaking the damn rules of engagement. When I first married you, you were a hot little spitfire. But as soon as you got that wedding ring on, you decided, you know what? I'm going to let myself go. Why? Because you can't leave. And if you try to get another little young piece of tail, I'm going to divorce you and I'm going to take everything from you. Why? Because I got the gun of the state. Yeah, absolutely shitty deal when it comes to men and marriage, especially in the West. These women know good and damn well marriage benefits only them, but yet they still have the unmitigated gall to gaslight men saying, oh, marriage only benefits men. No, 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 gentlemen. That is part of the fog. That is part of the haze. That is part of the malaise meant to keep you off balance. Yeah, right, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, gentlemen. You do not have to accept this. And especially when it comes to her letting herself go after marriage. Oh, no, 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 no. See, there needs to be full-on honest discussions when it comes to women and in marriage, relationships. Hey, if you let yourself go, then guess what? I see that as a betrayal and I'm going to get rid of you. But most men are unfortunately too afraid to have that damn discussion with their women. Now, let's go to the second pin, right? Restricting sex, weaponizing sex. I've said it before, and I will stand on this. Whenever the woman you're in a relationship with says, you will only get sex after you do these things, that gentleman is a form of abuse. Yeah. But once again, we men have been gaslit by society to accept, oh, men cannot be abused. Men can only be the abuser, which is why you have so many men nowadays constantly trying to quote unquote, overdo it when it comes to their women in their lives. Oh, I got to overspend. I got to overly praise all that crap. No, you don't. No, she decides I'm going to weaponize sex. I'm going to use it as a reward slash punishment system. Guess what? At that point, you need to get rid of her. Get rid of her. Walk out that damn door. Let her know. Oh, okay. Since this is what you want to do, fine. You can keep your vagina to yourself. However, I'm taking my resources and I'm going to find another woman who actually will be receptive. Yeah. 
Fellas, you got to have the hard conversation. You got to stand on your square. You have to stand your ground. The fact that we continue to accept this shit, especially in today's day and age, is absolutely goddamn ridiculous. You have to have those conversations. You have to set those boundaries. I find it very ironic. If you haven't heard anybody say this, you will hear it here first. Wives are the final form of the prostitute. Mm -hmm. Far too many men are paying to not get laid by their wives. Yeah, I was there for a time. However, before me and the meat sack got married, I let her know. I made sure to translate it into Japanese. That way she will fully understand it. When you decide that you no longer want to have sex with me, I will go get sex elsewhere. Period. Point. Blank. And the day she decided for a non-medical reason, oh, I just don't feel like it. Okay. Cool. I'm not going to force you to have sex with me. However, my monogamy is no longer on the table. You take sex, I take monogamy, period, point blank. I can't force you to have sex with me and you can't force me to be loyal to you anymore, period. End of discussion. But most men, they don't have the stones to actually say that because, oh, if I do anything, she's not going to have sex with me. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Remember, gents, her body, her choice. Your monogamy and wallet, your choice. Which I find very, very ironic. If this man would have went to a brothel, people would have called him a piece of shit. Well, your wife's not having sex with you. Why should you go to a brothel? That means you're not doing anything. That means it's your fault. No, she made an adult decision. Therefore, she's going to face the adult consequence, which is me and my resources are going to go find another woman. Period. Point blank. Yeah. Now, I was mentioned priorities, especially over here in America. Right now, we are having a tooth and nail battle for women to have the right to early terminate their children. Yeah, they literally had a mobile chop shop pull up to the DNC. We've managed to get weed legalized. You can go to a dispensary damn near anywhere. However, however, for whatever reason, when we say, hey, why don't we legalize brothels? Oh, oh my God, that's a bridge too far. My God, you are a deviant. Really? <laughs> I'm a deviant because I say, you know what? Since men aren't getting into relationships anyway, why don't we give men something to actually aspire to? Men have completely shut the fuck down when it comes to trying to actually get into relationships nowadays. Why? Because they know the eventual outcome. They know how much money they're going to waste trying to maintain a relationship. Hell, trying to even get into a relationship is a huge waste of money for a lot of men. So why not have brothels? It's a win-win scenario. The woman gets the money. The man gets to, you know, clean his pipes. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And you pretty much eliminate the criminal aspect of it. Oh, human trafficking is always the go-to when it comes to the topic of, you know, legalized pay for play. Well, if women are in brothels and a man can go to a brothel, it's a safe, clean environment. And every woman can be thoroughly checked and she can have her age 
properly verified. I know I'm just making sense here. I'm just using my logical mind for this topic. But, but we all know, we all know the illusion of the possibility of sex has always been leveraged when it comes to male labor. Men realize, you know what? Today's woman's not worth it. Fuck it. I'm going to pull back. I'm not going to work as hard. The idea of a family, that's pretty much null and void. So yeah, I'm going to live for myself. And guess what? Society and women hate it because these men can no longer be manipulated. Boy, I tell you, I tell you. Well, I've rambled on long enough. Read the article. Let me know what you guys think. Yeah, I'm going to say this one more again because it is ultimately the truth. Wives are the final form of the prostitute. And far too many men out here are paying for women that they're still not having sex with. So, yeah. I'm not going to sit back here and say that a man who's in a sexist relationship should not step out. I think it's the exact opposite. I think he should step out. Why? Because he is being abused and society has nothing to say about it. So for all you women out there who believe that you have the right to pretty much use sex as a weapon against a man in your life, you need to understand this and understand this crystally damn clear. The power you think you have in that scenario will go out. Why? Because guess what, ladies? You're not the only lady that has a working for JJ. And believe you me, there are a lot more women out there who will say, you know what? I will bend you over and let you rail me for all I'm worth for a fee. And guess what? That man's wife that I talked about in this article, she became the cheapest, most expensive professional on the, on the planet when she decided she was going to charge her husband for hanky-panky. And feminism, which ironically would be like, hey, you know what? You want to argue sex work is real work? Then why aren't you arguing for brothels? Hmm. But that's going to go out right along with it. And trust and believe, ladies, I'm going to reiterate, you outnumber us on a global scale. And you're not the only vagina that a man has access to. It's only because we decide that you're the one woman that we want to make sure is okay that we actually give you our commitment. However, don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted for a second. We have every means to go out and acquire another woman if we so desire. And guess what, gentlemen? If that's what you want to do, hey, have at it. Be safe about it. And let these women know. Competition, baby. Competition. That's all I got to say for this one. RPM, I am